Hey, how you guys doing tonight? This is Dan with Mad Nasty Trapping here. Um, just gonna run you a quick video. Uh, don't have a whole lot of don't have a whole lot of time tonight uh, because it is late. Uh, just you know, want to throw a couple things out there. Number one, first things first, I did attempt a live stream video using YouTube. Um, you can see that that's the video that's posted on there just before this one. Um, the the recap or the replay of the uh, of the live stream. It's it's up now. Um, I've watched a portion of it since I recorded it, and I came back to the house. I watched a portion of it, and I, I'm really not impressed. Um, and unfortunately, it's not anything caused by me or how I recorded it. When you record out in the woods, guys, there's uh, there's dropout zones and there's low cell phone signal zones and there's no Wi-Fi. There's a lot of issues I'm running into, and I hope that my next few videos that I do live stream, um, I can slowly start trying to make them better. I can try to record only the trap sets that are um, within good reception zones. Um, and maybe instead of running trap lines on live feed, as cool as that sounds to me, and I think it's probably pretty cool to everybody out there, um, instead of running live feed from the trap lines live, um, I could probably run some video out on the trap lines, standard video, save it, upload it, and then when I get back to the trapping shed here, when I get back to the first shed, at that point, I will already have uploaded my video from walking and running my trap lines, even though it wasn't live, I'll have that up there, and then I can do a live stream after that, a follow-up, where you guys will have a chance to watch the video of the running the trap lines, then come on and we can discuss that video. Something along those lines. Might work a little bit better live stream from here in the fur shed and out in the woods, run video and post straight video from out there. So... I don't know, but send me some messages in the comments, and if you got some tips on how to use this YouTube live feed better, um, I'd love to hear them. And again, I'm going to try doing some research, and I'm going to see if maybe I can up my cell phone plan to get better reception out in the woods. But right now, I think with my cell phone company, my cell phone service, I think is the top of the line, top of the line that you can possibly get. It's just you're out in the middle of the woods. There's no signal. So that's that's as far as that goes. Um, yeah, I rebated, re-tagged. Um, with the good, proper, pressed out, professionally stamped trapping tags, I re-tagged every one of my trap sets out there this weekend. I got new bait on every one of my trap sets this weekend. Every one of them has got fresh, fresh bait. Um, so we're good to go there. The weather's warming up. Stuff is melting. And it's sloppy and mucky, and the weather's getting better, so these critters are going to be moving now. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing now that the critters are moving. So, we should have some good. Uh, we should have some good catches this week. And uh, I, I had a buddy of mine go and uh, go and shoot a possum, and you know, had me go and skin it down. He kind of just gave me a possum, so I did that earlier today. Um, I did that on live stream um, video through uh, through the Meet Me app. I was on there live streaming. Um, and I'm starting to build a following on there too. And I'm trying to divert them all over to the YouTube because essentially I want to get back to YouTube being my sole source of content for everybody out there. Um, so that's that. A uh, couple of other things I want to go over real quick. Live traps, live traps, live traps. Yes, I run a string of live traps. I have not showed them on here yet. But uh, on Tuesday, I will be relocating all of my live traps to a different piece of the private property that I have access to. Um, it's pretty apparent that, you know, this large piece of property I have access to, it's, uh, you know, I've, I've pretty much trapped it out trying to help the landowner there to get rid of some of these uh, nuisance pest animals. And uh, I've gotten quite a few possum and a whole bunch of coon and, you know, some other critters off his property um, on that portion of this large chunk so i'm going to uproot all my dozen or so live traps because that's all I, you know and guys when you get permission from a landowner make sure that you go over your methods of trapping with the landowner okay if you're going to use leg holds if you're going to use footholds if you're going to use dp traps if you're going to use 
kind of bear kill traps if you're going to use live traps. Let them know what you're going to be, what your intent on using is, and get their approval. Okay, this property that I've got, the landowner says my daughter walks dogs on the property. I cannot have an unconfined, uncaged critter in a trap on my property. And I says, no problem, sir. I'll, I'll work around that with you. Okay. So I, I did the work around. And what I essentially came up with is, um, you know, I started off with some dog proof traps and, you know, the critters were exposed and the dog would run up to them and get in fight with the critters that's in the traps. The guy owns the property. He has the right to walk his dogs on his property. And he's, I'm grateful enough to have permission to go on his property. So um, I have to abide by the landowner's rules, as all of you should, okay? When you get somebody gracious enough to let you go and use their property for hunting and or trapping, make sure that you check in with them every time you go out there. When you go to go out to their property, call them. Let them say, hey, I'll be on your property in 15 minutes, buddy. Appreciate it. And then at the time you leave, at least send a text message and say, yeah, I did well or I didn't do well, but I'm off your property. Come on. This is how you treat landowners and you get the spread word of mouth and get permission. Okay? So I've been using these. Uh, and I'm going to go more in depth on um, how to gain access on private property land because, you know, that, that that's a tough thing to do too. And i got a couple of private property accesses and i got word of mouth getting spread pretty pretty goddamn quick um and a, and a whole lot of side jobs from this you know a couple of property owners that i've got permission on but going off of his recommend or his request of these animals cannot be exposed they must be cage confined i says fine not a problem i do have me a dozen of the live cage traps okay most people um know them as have a heart brand traps okay there's lots of different brands out there that you can buy and to be honest with you they all for the most part work about the same um yes they have heart traps they're a whole lot more sturdy they got a brand new latching mechanism on them that's really really nice but you're going to spend a lot of money on these traps my personal preference is i buy my live cage traps as cheaply as possible number one I buy them off of online resale apps. If I can buy any trap used, that's going to save me money, guys. So I go and I use those, uh, you know, I use the used traps. I mean, a lot of times I can pick them up for five, six, seven bucks. You know, a have a heart's going to run you 65, 70 on a coon size catching trap. You know, and if I can get the same damn trap and it's been used twice because they got a coon out of their attic and it, you know, and it sat in their garage and it collected dust and it's sitting there. You know, and sometimes I go to garage sales, and if they got one sitting in the corner on the shelf, you know, I'm always looking on the shelves, just walking around the garage sales, I'm looking, and, you know, if I see a coon trap up there, or have a heart coon trap, I said, when was the last time you used that, you know? And they say, oh, God, it's been up there since 1994. I go, hey, I got a $5 bill burning a hole in my pocket if you'd like to get rid of that. And majority of the time, they've caught that one critter, and they're sitting with it there, and they don't know what the hell to do with it, and spend all the money on it, and they just want to get a couple dollars back and get it out of their garage, and I've done it that way, too, um, but yeah, you get these live traps from, uh, from garage sales, uh, there's, there's apps like the Offer Up app, and the Let It Go app that you can download for free from the Google App Store, um, for you guys that are technology wise on there, you can go on there, you type in traps under search, and boom, they'll all hit, and you can buy them cheap, and I've been doing that like crazy, you know, even if I gotta outbid somebody, if I can still keep it ten to fifteen dollars a trap on a used, regardless of what kind of trap it is, that's about the price market I'm looking for on a used product. Okay, so that's number one. Buy them used, buy them used, buy them used. Flea markets, garage sales, and on the uh, online resale apps. Okay, so there's a little tip for you. Number two, um, cheap, brand new, out of the box traps. They're available at Harbor Freight, guys. Um, they stop stocking them on the floor for whatever reason, but they still have a stock of them um, in their back warehouse stock at any Harbor Freight out there. They run about, for a standard coon size trap, they, they run right around the neighborhood of about 20 bucks. They're not the cheapest things in the world, but you know what? Sometimes that's the only way to go. 
private property access or trapping near somebody's house or whatever, you know, live catch these suckers. A $20 trap's the way to go, and if you can realistically catch your money's worth out of there, then why the hell not? I don't need a brand name trap to be able to catch. Now, I will let you know that the have heart traps, they are sturdy. They got a hell of a closing mechanism on them. Um, they're very, very durable, and they're built for longevity, man. Those traps are awesome, but right now, $80 trap versus a $20 Harbor Freight trap. Have a heart, 80 bucks. Harbor Freight, 20 bucks. Come on, guys. Even if it gets me a couple less critter out of it before it gets beat to hell by these rough boy coons, that's still worth it, man. So, I got me a dozen of those. Now... I got a little bit of recording time left here. So uh, when I run my live cage trap, okay, and I, I don't have one here. They're all out in the woods right now. Um, but I will run a video on live cage trapping coon possum tomorrow. Um, either tomorrow or Wednesday, I will be running that video, okay? So little trick of the trade here. Now, we all go here. Expensive, expensive, expensive bait. Okay, Kentucky Fried Chicken is the preferred bait of Mad Nasty Trapping. Okay, uh, preferred bait of Mad Nasty Trapping is Kentucky Fried Chicken original, original, original. Now, I take that chicken. I used to go and zip tie it to the back of the cage. Run that zip tie to the back of the cage there. You know, run it through the piece of chicken to the back of the cage. Zip tie it. Open the door. You're rocking. Thirty seconds set. Okay, um, that's the way I used to do it, and what I realized is, uh, real quick, this bucket at KFC right here, this bucket right here, it runs about a good fancy 20 goddamn dollars. It is not cheap bait. And when they go in the trap and they steal the bait and I get a $5 coon per one piece of chicken, I realize that the dollars don't add up for those baits. So, to prevent theft, and I got about a minute left of recording time here, uh, with the theft issue, I realized that the best way to go about it is get yourself a roll of chicken wire, right? Get chicken wire just like this, okay? You get your roll of chicken wire from the hardware store, Home Depot's got it. You go in, you mat, you go and you cut yourself a square of chicken wire and completely wrap your chicken in it, making it impossible for the coon to go and grab your whole piece of chicken and eat the whole damn thing. What they'll do is they'll pick and tear and pull little pieces off of there over and over and over again when you zip tie the hell out of it to the back side of your cage. Boom. Back side of there, you're going to zip tie that to the back side of your, back side of your live trap. Next thing you know, they can't get it. They're caught. That's it. Done deal. So thanks for watching this video. I'm going to have another video coming up very soon. I'll see you on the flip side. Hit that subscribe. Hit that notification. And, uh, yeah, thanks for the support, guys. I appreciate all of you, every one of you.